All right, time for a new chapter, new topic. We're going to talk about uh, 11.1, the fundamental counting principle. Okay, we basically have one objective because it's the foundation of everything that we're going to do in this chapter, and that's to make sure that we can use the fundamental counting principle to determine the number of possible outcomes in a given situation. It turns out that it's really easy to understand, but that it's super uh, foundational, right? So we're going to make sure that we understand this pretty clearly. So to illustrate the fundamental counting principle, if you can choose one item from a group of M items and a second item from a group of N items, then the total of total number of two item choices is M times N. All right? So a tree diagram is one way that we represent this. And let's say that you get up in the morning and you have two possible pairs of pants um, <clears throat> and you have six, po uh, three possible pairs of shirts, right? So <clears throat> two pairs of jeans and three pairs of shirts. Well, depending upon which pair of pants you pick, you can still put that with either of the three shirts. And you pick the other pair of pants, you can put that with three pairs of shirts. And it shows you that you have six different ways of making the outfits. Well, if you think about it, you have two pairs of jeans times three pairs of shirts, and you're going to get six different types. So that follows the counting principle of M times N. I choose one thing out of M, I choose one thing out of N, and I multiply them together. All right? <clears throat> so let's take a look at an example, right? We always want an example of this. So the greasy spoon offers six appetizers and 14 main courses. In how many ways can a person order a two-course meal? Well, basically, I'm going to pick one appetizer out of six, so that's six, right? And I'm going to pick one main course out of 14 main courses, and so I'm going to multiply those two together uh, by the counting principle. And when you multiply six by 14 in your calculator, you get the answer of 84. So there are 84 two course meals that can be created. Alright? Which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's do a, another example. Alright? Uh, apparently I didn't like example 2, so I went straight to example 3. Um, next semester you're planning on taking three courses math, English, and humanities. There are eight sections of math, right? So eight sections of math, five sections of English, and four sections of humanities. Assuming no scheduling conflicts, how many different three course schedules are possible? Well, what do you think you would do here, right? Well, if we had two items, we multiply them together. If we have three items, we're going to multiply those together. So I'm going to take one course out of the eight, I'm going to take one course out of the five, I'm going to take one course out of the four, and I'm going to end up by multiplying those together with 160 possible schedules Just quite a bit, right? So hopefully you find something that uh, that works for you. All right. Uh, example number five. Suppose you are taking a multiple choice test that has ten questions. Okay, so we have ten questions. All right. Each question has four answer choices. Four answers with one correct answer per question. If you select one of these four choices for each question and leave nothing blank, in how many ways can you answer the questions? Now it says in how many ways can you answer the questions, right? So what we're doing is we're choosing one answer out of four for the first question. We're choosing one answer out of four for the second question. And so I'm going to choose one out of four for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten questions, right? So, wow, that's a lot. In fact, probably the easiest way to do that in my calculator is just write four to the tenth power. And if you do four to the tenth power, you get one million 
48,576 possibilities from a 10 question multiple choice exam. This is why even with multiple choice, it's not really a good idea to guess because there's a whole lot of possibilities. The chances of you getting a hundred on this test by pure guessing are one in a million. Literally. And that would not make us happy. So you don't want to be guessing on a multiple choice test. Alright. Last but certainly not least, the telephone number problem. Now, hopefully what you saw from example number five, right, is that it doesn't matter the number of items. What matters is what you're picking out of. So here I was picking answers, so that's why I had the fours all the way across, right? Here with telephone numbers uh, in the United States, they begin with three-digit area codes followed by seven-digit local telephone numbers. Area codes and local telephone numbers cannot begin with zero or one. All right, so how many different telephone numbers are possible? Well, first, let's think about the area code. If it can't begin with a zero or a one, how many digits are possible in the beginning of the area code? Well, eight, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are eight possibilities. Now, we have 800 numbers, so 0 and 1 are okay after that. So that's going to be 10 digits for the second and 10 digits for the third. Okay? Then we have the prefix. And again, it says it can't start with 0 or 1, so we're going to start with an 8. And then we're going to be followed by our two tens. And then, of course, then you have the, the final four. And those have no restrictions on it, so this is just going to be four tens, right? And so now, why the tens this time? Well, because I'm picking one digit out of ten. I'm picking one digit out of eight. And so this takes care of your phone number, right? So now if you look, I've got two eights, so that's like eight squared. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tens. So I can write that in exponential form. And if you plug that into your calculator and you count all the zeros, you get 6,400,000,000. And you're thinking, wow, that's a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. But consider that there are um, probably close to 7 billion people on the planet. And then you start to go, whoa. And then you think a lot of people, businesses, businesses, have phone numbers, and so some people have more than one number, like me, like I have an office phone, and I have a cell phone, and there's a house phone, right, and so that would mean that if I, there's four phone numbers for um, the, what, five people in my house, so it's really... It looks like fairly shortly we're going to run out of phone numbers as people get more and more cell phones and home phone numbers and business phones become more um, prevalent and stuff around the world. So even though 6,400,000,000 is a whole lot of telephone numbers, uh, this number of people, and when you start thinking about businesses and the fact that some people have more than one number, um, you we're going to run out of numbers. We're actually going to have to change either the prefix or the area code to include more and more uh, phone numbers. All right, so that concludes this uh, lesson, and that makes me really happy. Now we're going to learn how to apply this uh, in the next couple of uh, sections.